Good evening. A young law student in Kerala is raped for eight long years by a self-proclaimed godman. Worse, her family allow this to happen. Tormented and left with no choice, she does the unthinkable. She chops off her rapist's genitals. Now, this has led to widespread reactions across the country. Opinion is sharply divided. The government now says this can't be the law, this can't be a precedent, but it is open to a debate. We're asking tonight on Face Off, from swamis to pastors to maulanas, is chemical castration the only effective deterrent against rape in a country where a rape happens once every 20 minutes? Face Off begins right now. She was abused for eight years and finally claimed her justice by chopping off her abuser's genitals. The case of the Kerala rape survivor has sparked a fresh debate over the big question. Is it time now to legalize chemical castration as perhaps the only tough deterrent to rape? And we'll be putting those questions to our guest panel that will be joining us in just a couple of minutes. Dr. Shama Mohammed, spokesperson of the Congress, will be here in our studios. Asha Singh is Jyoti Singh or Nirbhaya's mother. She'll be joining us live tonight. Karun Anindi, Supreme Court lawyer, will be on the panel tonight. Brinda Adige is director of the Global Concerns Trust, live from Bangalore tonight. Rahul Ishwar, author and activist from Cochin, and T.G. Mohandas is convener of the BJP's intellectual cell in Kerala. Both of them will be joining us tonight from Cochin. Well, that's our big focus, and we'll get to our talking point panelists in just a couple of minutes. Here are the other headlines we'll be tracking this Monday night on Face Off. Over a month after Major Lethal Gogoi sparked off a row by tying a Kashmiri stone pelter to a jeep as a human shield, the soldier has now received a Chief of Army Staff recommendation for his action for sustained efforts in counterinsurgency operations. A political tussle over the death of Karnataka Kada IAS officer Anurag Tiwari, who was found dead in Lucknow. The Yogi government recommends a CBI probe, while the Karnataka government says the death is being politicized by his own parents. Ahead of the verdict by the Supreme Court on triple talaq, the Muslim Person Law Board tries to save face, advises Muslim couples to write in the Nikha Nama that they're against this practice. Yes, to him, he want to join politics, he should think about BJP, is a, there is an appropriate place for him in BJP. Talaivar keeps raising the political temperature after multiple hints from the superstar Union Minister Nitin Gadkari says there is a place for him in the BJP, but all are not quite happy. A fringe group protests outside Poe's Garden, that's Rajnikanth's residence, opposing his political ambitions. But up first, from Asaram Bapu to Swami Nityananda to Father Robin Vadakumcheri and now, the latest, Ganeshananda Tirthapadar. There is something about the so-called men of God in this country and sexual assault. Many of them end up being rapists and sexual predators when they actually claim to have renounced sexual desires. But then, rape is never about sex. It is about power. It is about humiliation. So when a woman, a victim of rape for eight years, turns the tables on her tormentor and castrates him, there is a perverse sense of justice about the whole thing. This incident happened in Kerala over the weekend between a 23-year-old law student and a self-proclaimed godman, allegedly with the knowledge and the connivance of her family. But it leads us to a more basic, more fundamental question. In a country where there is a rape every 20 minutes, has chemical castration perhaps become the only deterrent? First, the story and then the debate. <laughs> Raped repeatedly for eight years, 
a Kerala law student finally put an end to it. She chopped off her attacker's private parts. The beast in question, a 54-year-old self-proclaimed godman, Ganeshananda. The sexual assault started when the victim was a teenager. And here's the most shocking part. Her mother was not only in the know, but most likely even facilitated the rape of her daughter. It wasn't just Kerala's shame, but also India's. On Saturday night at around 11.30 p.m., the so-called Swami called the girl to his room and tried to rape her. When she resisted, the rapist threatened her with a knife. She somehow managed to take the knife from his hand and used it to end the trauma. The girl in her statement to the police has said that she castrated her tormentor, called 100 and ran to the police station. A case under the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act has been registered. The brave girl has the backing of Kerala Chief Minister Pinaray Vijayan, who called it a courageous step. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be left behind, the BJP too has demanded strict action. But the Saffron Party may find it hard to explain these pictures. The Swami seen with BJP State President Kumanan Rajashekharan. It's most unfortunate this incident in Kerala, but we must understand that if a girl needs to resort to self-defense as a measure to protect herself from a sexual assault, we must stand in solidarity with her. The public anger has not gone unnoticed. Government sources have told CNN News 18 that the centre is ready to start a debate on castration as punishment for rape. Sources have told us that the government, however, feels that it cannot be a legal solution nor can it set a precedent. Not just Kerala, but the entire country has an opinion about the castration. While some asked, did the young law student have no other option but to resort to such an extreme measure? Others are debating if castration is the best way to deal with rapists. With video journalist Ablash MS in Thiruvananthapuram, Neetu Radhukumar. So we're asking here on Face Off tonight, is it time to legalize chemical castration? Is that perhaps the only effective deterrent against rape? Let's first try and understand what exactly is chemical castration. It's the process of administrating anti-androgen drugs to a male sexual offender. The reason he's given those drugs is because chemical castration helps reduce the sexual offender's testosterone levels. Studies have shown, including in Denmark back in the 1960s, that chemical castration reduces repeat sexual offense. In that particular instance in Denmark, it reduced from 75% down to just 2%. Chemical castration has no life-threatening side effects. There are side effects, yes, but none of it is life-threatening. The effects of chemical castration are reversible. Chemical castration also interferes with the ability of men to procreate. And it has been adopted in a number of countries around the world, including at least nine states in the United States, in Argentina, Germany, Indonesia, South Korea, and Australia. And we're putting that question tonight to our panelists. We're asking our panelists, is chemical castration the only effective deterrent now against rape? Joining us here in our studios, Dr. Shama Mohammed, a spokesperson of the Congress. Joining us via satellite, Asha Singh. Uh, she's Jyoti Singh, or Nirbhaya's mother. Karuna Nandi, a uh, Supreme Court lawyer, is joining us from Delhi tonight. Brinda Adige is director at the Global Concerns Trust. Rahul Ishwar, author and activist. And T.G. Mohandas, convener of the BJP's intellectual cell in Kerala. Rahul Ishwar, I mean, I I'm going to start with you because it happened in your state. Has this become the only deterrent against rape? What this young law student did in Kerala, uh, if you look at you know, popular opinion in this country, a majority of people seem to be welcoming this. Perhaps because this is the state of affairs in our country that women are left with no choice but to resort to such street justice, if you will, because that's all they have. They don't have the power of the law. Saga, I agree. We need to have such strong actions. We need to create deterrence. How far that deterrent can go is a thing we should all debate. And always remember, the right-wing groups have always demanded death penalty for rapists or repeat at least repeat offenders. This is time we have to send out a message. But I would request all my dear sisters and girls out there, please don't tolerate for years altogether and then take this extreme step. 
always report it at the first instance let us learn to, let us teach our kids and our girls to no, but, uh, good uh, uh, no no hang on hang on this, this this girl w was was probably in her teens when this exactly, started exactly. Uh, this was uh, this was apparently with the connivance and the knowledge of her family and this man seemed fairly influential there are pictures of him with the state bjp president you expect a teenager to approach the police i mean th therein Please. lies the problem you you are now turning around rahul ishwar and saying that it's her fault absolutely no this is a space where we have to take very carefully and cautiously let us have more counseling and mentoring groups in our schools and colleges because every time everyone cannot take this extreme step this happened everybody is lauding her like a jansi rani we are all with that girl we have demanded legal immunity for that girl we all appreciate that and let alone this person or any other person he doesn't belong to any religion even ravan adorned the cross of a sanyasi to pita pita so it was there from time immemorial but let us encourage our girls to uh, re uh, report it at the first instance i, no, I, I, I find it amazing shaba you you want to come in on that rahul ishwar is saying that here's a 16 i think i think it started when she was 16 years old rahul exactly. ishwar is effectively saying a version of oh it's her fault you know we all know what rahul ishwar stands for so a chauvinist so you can't expect anything else from him now we have to understand why she an educated girl has continued with it for 8 years why she has not taken a step of taking it and talking because the parents her mother must have been knowing it for sure and why hasn't her mother reported because if you go and say a godman is raping my daughter it is that the shame you know once what most important thing here is we need to sensitize these parents you know about that even if it's a godman it's a molvi it's a priest you need to go and make a complaint you no, can't no but what what sort of mother allows her own daughter to be so raped i mean i don't care what so kind that, of godman this guy question, is that is the question that is the question what sort of mother allows her, her own daughter to be raped that is the question we need to ask is why is it why hasn't the mother come up to the police and complaint when the daughter has been repeatedly raped no and why and isn't the mother a, a co accused in this case she is as much party to, to this rape she is as much party to this rape and this poor girl has been suffering maybe she must have told her mother listen i need to go to the police and mother must have said no you can't ka, ka, so she is definitely a co accused and karuna and the has 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 the time come and, and i'm asking this you know a, a lot of people have been reacting on our facebook page on our on our twitter poll as well they are saying that you know perhaps the state of affairs when it comes to women safety in this country is so bad that women have to resort to something like this um you know in this particular case it was self defense it sounds like that he was even in the immediate situation that this man this uh, swami was trying to rape her and she um you know she uh, cut off his private parts allegedly i only i, I don't have um, access to any information except from the media but um, you know i mean i think there's a huge debate both ways and some people are making her sound like a jansi ki rani and others are saying that you know the law should prevail etc and i think actually here is someone who from the age of 16 yeah. has been repeatedly assaulted in a situation where she didn't seem to have an out at all it sounds like why just focus on the mother what about the role of the other members of a family exactly um, exactly i agree it sounds like everyone was why demonize the mother only you His know it paralyzed. sounds like the other members of a family were also colluding with the situation because why did she have nobody to talk to and so in such a situation i think uh, it's right what our legal system is ripe for is to bring in what is called a battered women's defense which means that if you have been if your resistance has been worn down after you know when you're in a situation where it's kind of like stockholm syndrome you know when there's a person who has power over you and you you have just been battered over and over and over again uh in cases like r versus aluwalia a famous film was made about it i think with ashwarya rai uh in jurisdictions like canada in jurisdictions like the united states in some cases it's only um when it's a domestic case um but it is recognized that battered women even after a cooling off period if they attack their attacker sometimes it is a reduced sentence sometimes they are acquitted because it is recognized that if you keep abusing someone at some point it becomes a defense it's a bit like insanity you know it no, but, 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 but here, here, here's the what here, here's defenses, the thing so i i i don't know i don't know why i don't know why but brinda adige four and a half years after nirbhaya there seems to be absolutely no uh, decrease in the number of rape cases 
that are being reported. For example, uh, in Delhi alone, I just want to put these figures out. Since 2012, in 2012, there were 706 cases of rape. In 2013, it was 1,600. It was a twice jump. In 2014, 2,100. In 2015, 2,199. And in 2016, 2,155. Admittedly, some of this is because of increased reporting. But the fact is, if rapes are happening once every 20 minutes, why can't we, just like in the UK, just like in Poland, just like in Russia, Germany, Czech Republic, why can't we have castration, chemical castration? Perhaps, I don't know, maybe it might be a more effective deterrent than death, which we currently have on the statute day books. Brinda Adige. I absolutely agree. Medical castration for rapists should be the answer just now. One is the critical mass that you're talking about every 20 minutes. And this analysis has come about only of cases that have been reported. Exactly. Just imagine the innumerable cases that are not reported. So we do not really have any count or statistics. And we also know... Go on, go on. I can hear you, Brinda. Go ...that on. the judiciary is very, very tedious and very cumbersome. We have a patriarchal mindset across the system, the administration and the politicians at large, which means the blame is always, always placed on the girl, on the woman, as if she had any control or power to stop it or thwart it. We also many times, like we, have, we saw Rahul Ishwar, implying yeah. that you should go to the police. No, no, I, 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 I really want to clarify that. I mean, are you actually suggesting, let, let, let me get a response from, are you actually suggesting, Rahul, that it, it was the girl's fault in a way that she did not go to the police? I mean, I find it baffling. If this happened to, to my sister or to your sister, would our response be the same? And think about a 16-year-old girl. And think about a 16-year-old girl. 16-year-old girl is selling she, to go to the police. Kid, she's, I mean, she's scared. She is Please scared, Rahul. She's out of the genuine care for our sisters that I don't play to the gallery. It is... This is not playing to the gallery, Rahul. This is a 16-year-old girl. Every not child is not strong. Gallery. Every yeah, woman no. is not a Brinda, Adige, or me, or anybody else. They can be very shy girls, and they don't know what to do. All right. Sorry. You, you... Brinda, finish what your do part. you do when you go to a jurisdiction police station and the, and the police refuse to register your case? Exactly. The police decide that you need to adjust. And because that you're the, you need it's to a God compromise. Man. That your family prestige and respect is at stake. And in this particular case, please remember, this it's is a godman. God Correct. And the entire family has also been victimized. Whatever anybody might have to say, mother knew about it, she colluded with us. Why don't you look at it that the entire family was victimized? And I, I, I couldn't see it over here, but I understand that this man was also sharing the stage with some other yes. powerful politicians. Yeah, I'm going to play this out those pictures. I'm going to play out those pictures. There are, there, are pictures of, country. there are pictures of this will, man. Will you this, actually this walk up and say that this, this powerful man... This, 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 one second, Brinda, daughter? I want to play out those pictures. There, there are pictures of this man, self-proclaimed Swami, Ganeshananda Tirtha Padar. He, there are pictures of him with the state BJP president. I want to get in T.G. Mohandas. Convener of the BJP's uh, intellectual cell in Kerala. Uh, the, the, the man on the left is Kumanam Rajashekaran. He's the state president of the BJP. Do you condone this, Mr. Mohandas? Do you condone the actions of this man? No, absolutely no. See, there are two issues here. One thing, the visual which is shown to you. At that time, nobody knew that uh, this gentleman, Ganesh Ananda or Gangesh Ananda, who saw he is, whether he was a criminal or not, nobody knew that. See, unless you knew somebody's background, you cannot just disbelieve anybody sitting adjacent to you, and it is a common delegation went to the chief minister for some other purpose. That is one thing. Can I come in? Now? Number two, I being a part of this society and being a politician, I take my share of responsibility uh, to which what has happened here. See, what is happening is, no girl generally would dare to go to a police station and uh, tell these incidents and ask for registering an FAR. It is unthinkable in India. Exactly. Maybe, maybe in urban uh, cases it may be happening. But you can go to rural cases, even in Kerala, which is supposed to be the highest uh, literary rate uh, state, it is unthinkable for the girl to go to the police station and register an FAR. And it is the case, same case with her mother also. 
And when somebody who is having psychological upper hand, like a Swami or Godman, whosoever you call him, it is all the more difficult for them to go and complain. It is, uh, is it not astonishing that she didn't share it uh, even with her friends? She is a law student. Yes. She could have done that. But she was terrified beyond all reasonable limits and she was living through this for uh, eight years. Exactly. No, no, T.G. Mohanas, my, know, my, my, unless, I, I welcome, I unless welcome unless what you're saying. Let but, me but complete, let me it, complete. I want unless to ask we reform our Baba police wants to ask you something. and uh, we reform our judiciary. No, no, we'll come our, to the reform of our, our judiciary in just a moment. But Shama, Shama has a question for you. Shama has a even, question for you. Even and then I need to go to Asha Singh. No, no, I just, Shama, I want to ask, police station. Police station is I not, a, ask, not an asylum no, no, for what's your people. Question? What's your question? But, it, is, it is another uh, terror for the okay, people. Okay, once again, Shama Mohan has a question for you. What I want to ask you is, this particular god man was a member of the Hindu Aikya Vedi for 15 years. Yes. And, and who was the general secretary of this? Mr. Rajashekaran, who is the BJP president. Now, you're telling me this BJP, who has been the general secretary of this particular organization, the Hindu Aikya Vedi, that Mr. Rajashekaran did not know this godman at all? I, d I don't agree. And Mr. Rajashekaran, when this thing came out, his comment was, I know all swamis in Kerala. Let the, police conduct, uh, let the police conduct the probe. He has not condemned it. He has not said that this particular godman, if he is guilty, definitely he should be punished. That's what Mr. Rajesh Rekin should have said as a BJP president. But he Mr. did not Bonas. say. He just said that, that I know all swamis and let the police conduct the probe. So what does he mean? He, he doesn't condemn it. That means he condones it. M Mr. Mohandas, a quick, quick response <laughs> to that. I need to go to Asha Singh after no. that. <laughs> that is... That is a uh, political uh, statement. But it is because it is, uh, he is a member of that. Everybody knows that. Uh, listen, madam. Listen. This I Swami was never Kerala a member of the Hindu Aikya Vedi. There was a government with, intended to take uh, over a religious sir. institution. And there was a delegation meeting the then Chief Minister V.S. Achyavanandan, in which this Swami also happened to be a member. But Mr. Mr. He was Mr. not a member of Hindu Aikya Vedi or anything. He has been a member now, for a long time, cannot, 15 years. The Panmanam your... Ashram, the Panmanam Ashram Secretary A. A. Girish Kumar. Hindu Aikya Vedi Ashram. Yeah, so he has told that he has itself so that if he is guilty, let him be punished. Why has Mr. Yeah. Rajasekhar not said anything? He has not condemned it. He has not condemned it because he knows it quite well. For the last 15 no, years, they've been don't together. Be, don't so be, please, come on, don't be childish like this. It is not childish, you know, it's the truth. When the truth comes out, the BJP does not want, want to agree. It is the truth. They have taken somebody from who has been from this Hindu uh, Aikya Vedia, is, uh, General Secretary is Mr. Kumarakam, Mr. Rajashekaran, and you have taken him from there. And they are, they are good friends, so he should have said that. His only thing he should have said is that, Madam, I condemn this. Madam, are Did he you, say I, that? I, Did he I, say I, I condemn it? Congress. I, did not, he say I have condemned it? You he is are not. From Congress, he so is you not. want to put Mr. Kur, uh, Rajashekaran, who is a she kind is of from a vigilante. So I am from the Congress, from a vigilante group like Hindu Akya Vedi, as the head of the uh, BJP in you, Kerala. That's you what are you from want Congress. to do. Your Congress president is uh, your Congress president is implicated. Implicate? What are she you is talking about rape over here? here? She is on bail now. What are you Roaming talking about? We are not talking about corruption. We are talking about something like this. She, they, they are not You're guilty. Rahul I am asking why he has he, not condemned it. He is it. also accused in a case in I'm, National Herald. What is he talking about? Mr. Mohandas, I doing? find it unbelievable. No, 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 you you no, have compared a corruption case to a case of rape for eight years. He is not condemning Come on, please. Don't wait. I expect you to have... You have... This is the respect the bad age of the... No, 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 one second, one second, Mr. Mohandas. No, no, Mr. Mohandas, one second, one second. One second, you can't, you can't possibly, you can't possibly in your right mind compare a corruption case to eight years of rape. Eight years of rape. Mr. Mohandas, I expect... I expect a better defense than that from you. You're the convener of the BJP intellectual so shows, cell. You yeah, can't yeah. can compare party, eight party. years of rape no, but to a corruption case. The lady is going to the party. Party. Asha Singh, about Asha Singh, one, one second. I have to remind her about the Harold leader. No, one second. I want to go to Asha Singh. Asha Singh, Asha Singh, you tell me, after this case, there is a big debate in this country that there is a law for rape and there is a law for rape and there is a law for castration. Ka kanun hona ये ये जो जो रेपिस्ट है चाहे वो स्वामी हो या तंत्री हो या प्रीस्ट हो जो भी है उसको नपुंसक कर देना चाहिए वही होगा एक इफेक्टिव कानून आपका क्या राय है आशा जी बिल्कुल सही है क्योंकि 
आठ साल जिस बच्ची के साथ वो उसने जो भी है घिनौना किया है आप ये अंजादा लगा सकते हैं कि आठ साल में वो किस तरह से कैसे कैसे वो समय को सामना की होगी कितनी तकलीफ हुई होगी तो रेपिस्ट को तो जितनी भी सजा दीजिए चाहे उसे नक पुंसक करिए चाहे उसको हाथ काटिए चाहे फांसी दीजिए कुछ भी कम है क्योंकि कहने का कहने के लिए बस एक छोटा सा शब्द है रेप लेकिन उससे उस बच्ची पे उसके परिवार पे कितना अफेक्ट पड़ता है वही परिवार समझता है तो मैं तो यही कहना चाहती हूँ कि हम जब भी भी कुछ घटना होती है हम डिबेट करके पॉलिटिक्स में उलझ जाते हैं वो उनके ऊपर थोपते हैं उनके ऊपर थोपते हैं जी। लेकिन मेरा तो कहना है कि जितने रेपिस्ट हैं उनको कड़ी से कड़ी सजा मिले चाहे फांसी हो चाहे नपुंसक बनाओ लेकिन उनको इस दुनिया में जीने का हक नहीं है जिसने बच्चियों के साथ ऐसा घिनौना अपराध कर रहा है मैं मैं उस चीज को सोच सकती हूं कि मैं पांच साल अपने बच्ची के हिसाब के लिए लड़ी हूं तो मैं किस किस हालात का सामना करी हूं वो बच्ची अकेले आठ साल अपने शरीर अपने साथ शोषण को सही है उस वो किस तरह से आठ साल अपना निकाली होगी तो इससे जितनी भी सजा मिले उस उस रेपिस्ट को उतना ही कम है उसको तो जल्द से जल्द फांसी पे लटका देना चाहिए ले, ले, let me also play out some reactions from ordinary people. What are ordinary people in Kerala as a very shocking story and uh, considering the fact that uh, she says or uh, in her statement to the police the, the the rape survivor tells that her mother was in the know how of uh, all these activities but so far the police have not officially said anything about this or uh, they have not even um, uh, said that the mother uh, is uh, is in the custody but through sources we know that the mother has been taken into custody since morning and the uh, officials are uh, questioning her now i have along with us a couple of youngsters from tiruvananthapuram let's try and find out from them what they feel about this incident that has happened uh, back home so close home and do they think that this was the right uh, thing to do it's not good for a democratic nation like india but we should also think that what may, made her to do so she does not have belief in the uh, entire judicial system she does not have believe in the law and order system she is absolutely wrong actually I have seen uh, a visual in a in an English film named Kill Bill, like uh, like a visual. Uh, she she may be inspired by that film. I think uh, it is uh, not the way to react such an incident. I think it was really brave of her to do what she did. Like uh, going by the report, she must have done. I mean, she must have gone through all this for a few years by now. So everyone reaches a breaking point. You know, Ra Rahul Ishwar, th those were reactions from Kerala, and and and. Many people seem to be welcoming this, and I don't want to make this about you know one sannyasi. There have been numerous cases of Catholic priests. I mean, recently there was this case of Father Robin Vadakum Jeri, who uh, was repeatedly sexually assaulting a young girl, a minor at that. Eventually, the girl became pregnant, and that's when the case came to light. I mean, there's this other case of Pastor Sunil K. James, and this is a sickening case, Rahul. Again, in, again from Kerala, he was convicted in March of 2016 under POSCO. He was given a punishment of 40 years Poxo, for raping. Poxo is the company. Yeah, uh, uh, Poxo. Sorry, po po sorry, Poxo. Uh, for for 40 years, he was given a 40-year sentence, and then a new case came to light where he was raping a 12-year-old. I mean, what's Very with true. these? What's with these so-called men of God, and and and, and 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 sexual predatory, Rahul Ishwar? There are two points, Saka. There are always black sheep among babas. The fight is between good men and bad men. The question is not of God men. There are good men in everything like and bad men in everything. I know majority of Hindu sannyasis, Christian priests and Muslim maulavis are good people. They you know, work for charity, they work for social so formation. And no, but why, why are we then but repeatedly getting these cases? Men versus men, even when we talk about... One percentage has what? fallen down. It's a, it's a question of good men versus bad men. It's not a question of God men. There are black sheep. Everyone agrees. We need to have a cleansing system. We need to have better understanding, awareness, and track record of these people. Everyone agrees with that. But let us not use this occasion to tarnish spirituality as such, because greatest of 
You know, you know, some of the most infamous cases, Rahul, that have happened in Kerala have have involved uh, pastors, priests. In this case, a Swami. Why? I mean, th there's got to be a reason for it. Either they have, they are powerful people, they have connections with the police and and with politicians. Why? Some some of the greatest game changers and uh, the yoga purushas, reformers in India and Kerala have been spiritual people. Vivekananda, Sri Narayana Guru, Chakandi Swami, Gandhiji had spirituality. But there are always Judas is among these. They, we can always say there are you know such kind of black sheep. We condemn it. We are apologetic for it. We are really sorry that such people do exist. And please remember, the ashram has gone ahead and said we will never feel the guilty. All no. the guilty should be punished. I, 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 That's the right approach. I, to I, 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 I have more comments and and, and opinions uh, coming on this on this castration story. And and you can take part in this live poll. It's it's running on the side of your screen. Brinda Adige, I, uh, you know, in the aftermath of Nirbhaya, when the Justice Verma Commission looked at you know how to strengthen the law. One of the things that they looked at was castration, and this is what Justice Verma uh, had to say about castration from pages 252 and 253 of the Justice Verma Committee report. Uh, we also noticed from the literature on the side effects of chemical substances like Depo-Provera. It includes osteoporosis, hypertension, fatigue, weight gain, etc. We are further of the opinion that chemical castration fails to treat the social foundations of rape, which is about power and sexually deviant behavior. We, theref we therefore to hold. Uh, that mandatory chemical castration as a punishment contradicts human rights standards. The commission also goes on to say that we think that a mutilation of a body is not permitted by the constitution of India. Death is a known form of penalty, but mutilation has not been recognized in progressive jurisprudence. I want you to weigh in on this, and I'll come to Karananandi also on this. If Justice Varma has looked at this and says that he feels this is a violation of human rights and laid down progressive jurisprudence, uh, is, is, there, is, there, is there the other side of the debate that we need to consider? Or some would even say, I mean, which of the two is, the, is a graver violation of human rights? Isn't rape in and of itself a graver violation of human rights than castration of the, of the rapist? Absolutely. Rape is the heinous, graver part of violence that we are talking about. And like you mentioned, rape is about asserting power. Rape is also taking advantage of that position of power, that position where they know that nobody is going to do anything to them. Hmm. So it is never anybody can say that it was done at the spur of the moment. It was emotional. It was passionate. It isn't. There is taken, time taken, one minute, five minutes, one hour, ten hours to think through this and commit that crime. And this rape, if the Justice Varma Commission has done a lot of discussions and debate and decide that this is mutilation, then do they agree that death penalty is fit enough for rape? Because that is also something that I, I think should be considered for rapists in India when we are talking of such an increased number of rapes on a daily basis. No, is it, is Again, it rape itself or mutilation of a woman's reported. body, uh, Karun Anandi? So if the Justice Varma Commission Absolutely, feels, that's what you're saying. Yeah, rape feels is that castration mutilation is mutilation of, of one's body and that's not it recognized in the Constitution, of her dignity. rape itself is a mutilation Violation of a woman's of body. Violation of every human right. Karun Anandi. Um, three things. One is that the Justice Verma Committee didn't support the death penalty either. We hear a lot of, you know, in our names, in the names of, uh, you know, by people like Rahul Ishwar and others, we hear a lot of uh, bloodlust, you know. But let's not forget that there are also women like Bilkis, there are also other people who said that I want justice, I do not want revenge, you know. The second thing is that the death penalty, of course, has been established over and over and over again, does not work to reduce rape. Let's look at chemical castration now. In terms of chemical ca castration, you cited some studies. There's also the Department of Justice study in the United States that shows that the rate of repeat offense, recidivism, is the same. I think it's about 5.3% uh, uh, in that range uh, for uh, a, a rapists and, rap uh, and rapists who are chemically castrated. Um, the second thing is that in a lot of jurisdictions that you cited, it's also not mandatory and court-ordered. It is voluntary in lieu of incarceration. Thirdly, when you speak of human rights and you speak of the state versus the individual versus the individual versus the individual, these are two very, very different things because the state has a lot of power, the individual has less power, right? Um, 
uh, and also we forget that you know when it's a woman uh, who is being attacked <coughs> yes it is about sex but to a very very significant uh, um, extent as you mentioned I think some other people mentioned on the show it's very much about power and dominance and so therefore what does work you know it's very sort of exciting I think for a lot of people to talk about death and chemical castration and anger and it's a sort of vent and I think that in measured terms yes these things can be discussed and considered but what actually pre prevents violence against women it's boring stuff it's having more judges it's having people who you know it's when you it's having more police people it's when you are recruiting these people that you don't increase misogyny and patriarchy with the addition of a stick that you make sure that you rec recruit on the basis of gender and the attitude okay. to gender that you have quicker swift justice no, that in I, I that you get, change attitudes, I, you know, I, I get that, that you don't have the, these I, people having a political discussion and saying it's a political issue because it's a god man and saying that it's all right and that we know, oh, he just happened to be there and yes, a BJP member was uh, the head of the um, particular sect or whatever, you know, some organization that he was a part of and it's a political issue to protect him. Somebody no, no, say no, that outright on national television? No, what, what, one sec. Well, the, the, the thing, uh, the study that I want to cite was, was something that was done in Denmark in the 1960s. Uh, there was a study of over 900 castrated There's a more sex offenders. Study by the Department of Justice. Suggesting that the rate of repeat offense, something that you refer <laughs> to, recidivism, uh, the rate of repeat offenses dropped to yeah, 2% exactly. from over 80% after surgical castration. I mean that that suggests to me that eighty percent that eighty percent figure sounds completely wrong, Zaka. I'll take a look at the study. This, this uh, in is, fact, if you email it to me now, I could this, respond this immediately. This is this is this is this is what I have. This is what I have. But but Rahul Ishwar, I, I think the po the point the point is this, that perhaps the time has come, and, and I'm just going by what, uh, what what people on the street are saying. Perhaps the time has come for seriously considering chemical castration streets, as an alternative you know, uh, no punishment. I believe, I, I believe such harsh punishment should definitely be considered. In the name of human rights, we shouldn't shy away from those people who kills and attacks the soul of a woman. And rape kills and attacks the soul of a woman, that's a very serious thing. Along with that, all the you know, devotion groups, all the religious groups understand, PM Modi has drafted it in the perfect way. We should start with the boys. In, you know, in our 50 to 60 years, the first time a PM went on Redford and said, let us start with the boys and we should have more value education. We should bring up our boys in a perfectly manner. We should teach them how to respect girls. Along with that, we should have some kind of a martial arts and self-defense training for girls. It's a holistic, many factorial thing. You cannot solve this issue with any one no, step. No, I'm asking you, you a simple yeah. question. No, no, I, Shama also wants to come and I'm asking both you and TG Mohandas a very simple question. If tomorrow a court of law, after a due process of trial, uh, it concludes and finds this man guilty uh, and says that chemical castration, at least in this case, is setting a good precedent and we recommend it, would Rahul Ishwar welcome it? Would T.G. Mohandas would, welcome it? I would, would wholeheartedly welcome it. Would, would, and all the right-wing groups from time immemorial has always advocated for harsher punishment. It is the left-wing human rights lobbies that has always stood against harsher punishment. We Sh believe the integrity of a woman is Sh uncompromisable. So Sh Shama, harsher, wants to come in. Sh Shama wants to come in. See, the, the problem here is the patriarchal system here. They don't look at what is the core issue. It's the patriarchal system here where we need to sensitize them, teach them from school that to respect women. That is not thought. Number two, I don't want to make it a BJP versus Congress issue. But here I'm asking the spokesperson of the Bhatia Janta Party is that why has Mr. Rajashekran not come out and said, I condemn this. If this man has done something wrong, let him go behind bars. He did not condemn it. Let me tell you, he has not condemned it. He has just said the police will look into it. I know all the swamis here. So the, the thing is, condemning this is very important. But otherwise, what the BJP is trying to say to win votes, they don't care if it's a god man, if he's a rapist, if he's a criminal. As long as he can win votes for us. That's the message you're giving out to the people. So let me make it very okay. clear. That it's not a BJP versus Congress issue. It's about a man who's in a position of power, who's a leader in Kerala. The BJP's topmost leader, that is a BJP president, has not come out and condemned it. Mr. Mohandas, Mr. Mohandas, I'll give you, I'll give you the, I'll give and you the final word. these are the people word. who should condemn it. The people I, on the top I'll give post, you the, final the word. leaders. Is this There's Swami, Ganga, whatever his name is, is, is he so powerful and so important to your state president that he can't say a word against him? Absolutely no. Our president has spoken against him. He has condemned that. Unfortunately, he has not. 
my counterpart in congress has not read it no, probably no, i am from kerala i read the kerala it. news i have read don't it. i am from kerala i don't read interrupt. it don't interrupt see don't interrupt don't interrupt please i am also an authorized person of bjp like uh, what is happening in congress for you so uh, you are speaking and i am listening to you when i am speaking please listen to me see have you seen kerala newspapers kerala channels yes i have seen it Prob- probably it did you didn't notice what he said you just chose the words which you wanted and you are attacking him see this swami has nothing to do with any of our sangha parivar organizations he was there for- there was a common delegation going to meet the chief minister and kumaram rajshekaran cannot select the people who are coming from other organizations or independent uh, people and there was a photograph and now that photograph is being played to belittle kumaram rajshekaran which is untrue and people know who is kumaram I rajshekaran don't agree. and what what he what he said is right he knows uh, almost every swami in kerala but having said so he doesn't know the background of every swami but wasn't he a member of the hindu ikvedi a future crime Ayurvedi? cannot be a future crime cannot be predicted no wasn't he a member of the hindu ikvedi the photo Mr. no he was Mr. no swami this swami the so called swami was is, never a member of is, any of the sangha parivar organization he was a member he was a member of the hindu ikvedi please check your facts okay no, I'm, I'm, absolutely i'm sorry you I'm don't know the hindu ikvedi you, you are lying on national every, television every leader of hindu ikvedi in kerala i know you are lying on national television madam, i'm sorry madam, to you say that madam you come to kerala I am not from Kerala. Kerala. I am like from this. Kerala. Okay. I'm no, going, you, you are sitting. I'm, you are sitting in a glass house in Delhi. I'm going to wrap you up. You ask your Kerala no, politicians to speak Janta about this. I'm, 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 I'm going to wrap up. Sorry, it's shameful. I'm, I'm, you, I'm, you, I'm, you, you don't know. You, no, no, you I'm, thought Hindu ayurved is a vigilante group. Yes. It is a good word for you. Mm. No, no, I'm going to wrap up. I announced from the rooftops. No, no, you don't know Hindu ayurvedi. That is why you are calling them a vigilante group. They are not vigilante group. One second, one second. Can I say this? You are not speaking about Uttar Pradesh. You are speaking about Kerala. One second, Mr. Mohandas. Have some sense. I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to wrap up by saying this. I don't care if it's the Hindu ayurvedi. I don't care if it's the Catholic Church. I don't care if it's some Maulana. The fact is, if there's a man right. found raping a young girl for eight years, he, he deserves to be punished. He deserves to be punished. Yeah, And anybody, anybody who who willy nilly tries to wishy wash himself from that person, I think it's shameful. I think it's spineless. It doesn't matter whether it's the state BJP president or the state Congress president or the state left president. I'm going to wrap it up at that. Thank you very much to all our panelists for joining us. on this talking point we haven't heard the last word on this this man is still uh, in the trivandra medical college he'll be ostensibly shifted uh, to a police lockup because he's been he's been uh, uh, he's been remanded to judicial custody i think for 14 days but we haven't heard the last word on this perhaps this might set off a chain reaction perhaps this might set off that uh, big debate across the country which might force our parliamentarians perhaps in the next session to come up uh, with a new law a strengthened law in which chemical castration is also one of the options for punishment uh, i'm going to leave it at that quick break here on the program when we come back uh, another big breaking story here on face off at 9 the chief of army staff has made a recommendation for major mikul gogoi who was the one who tied a kashmiri stone pelter to a jeep a major recommendation coming from the coas we'll have the details of that story right on the other side stick around we'll back in a couple of minutes Welcome back. It was Major Lethal Gogoi who, back in April, tied a Kashmiri stone pelter to his jeep like a human shield while leading his team through a tense area in the valley. His action sparked outrage, but now Major Gogoi has received a Chief of Army Staff recommendation for his action, namely for sustained work in counterinsurgency operations. This is even as a court of inquiry is on against him. Shri Adondial is now joining us on the phone line. Uh, clearly, this decision has been taken by the COAS to send out a larger message. perhaps to both uh, folks within the army and outside that he is backing his man absolutely and uh, in fact zaka uh, this is what we have heard from day one that the chief of army staff was in any case completely backing what major lethal gugai did in shrinagar and it's not just the army chief the entire indian army at least the officers and the jawans who are serving were completely backing him they said look he was in a difficult position he had 22 men under his care he had to ensure that they left that polling booth in shrinagar safe not a drop of blood was 
spilt so it was mission accomplished it was a job well done that was the opinion of the indian army or of everyone within the indian army from day one yes the opinion did differ uh, as far as uh, the retired generals we often hear on television are concerned they were the ones who had said look this is an image that will go down and haunt the indian army for years to come well that's not what the chief of army staff clearly believed in so a week ago we are learning that the chief of army staff uh, has honored major letul gogoi with the commendation uh, card of course the official language is something that you've just read out uh, the official language says for his good performance in counter insurgency situations uh, now you know the fact is that major letul gogoi has been posted in jammu and kashmir in the valley for only a year All it's right. very clear it's very clear and i don't think anyone should have any doubt about this this is as clear as it gets he has been awarded and rewarded for what we now know and now know as as the jeep incident all right we'll leave it at that uh, thanks very much for joining us shreya dondial my colleague there reporting on this recommendation by the chief of army staff for sustained counter insurgency operations to major gogoi in case you feel strongly about the story and i'm certain i'm sure a lot of you do go to our website news18.com from me zaka jacob and the rest of the team thanks for your time on the other side between the chobe with the viewpoint mm-hmm.